In the first six months of this year, China installed about 70% of the world's solar, literally. Even in spite of that fact, though, solar deployments in the United States have absolutely skyrocketed. We're looking at predictions that by 2030, renewable energy will now make up 50% of all electricity supply in the United States. Now, solar and wind accounted for 91% of new US electrical generating capacity added in the first half of this year, in spite of the best efforts of the Donald Trump administration to slow it down. I mean, it's still, still skyrocketing. And honestly, if only the Trump administration actually supported it, these numbers, which are, to be honest, incredibly impressive, and I'm going to share with you just how amazing they are, they would be even better. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, so basically a division of the government, they actually said that in June, solar alone provided 82% of new capacity in the United States. So all the power added to the US grid in June, 82% of it was solar. That was the 22nd consecutive month in a row where solar was the number one source of electricity installed in the, night in the United States. In its latest monthly energy infrastructure update report, FERC said, that 2,440 megawatts were placed into service in June, meaning yeah, 82%. However, in the first six months of this year, one 14,567 megawatts of utility scale solar was added to the grid. That does not include rooftop solar. And that was 75% of all new US electrical capacity. So for the first six months of this year, all the new electricity added to the grid 75% of it was solar, but actually that number could have been closer to 80% if we include rooftop solar as well. Solar has been the largest source of generating capacity for 22 months in a row, and it is annihilating coal. Nuclear, none to be seen. It's all basically, to be honest, I find it's very strange, but even the government themselves said there's not going to be any new nuclear added to the grid in the next three years. I mean, of all the talk going on about nuclear, nothing's actually happening. Between January and June, new wind power provided 3,140 megawatts of capacity. And that was double the new capacity of natural gas at 1,700, or nearly double. Wind accounted for 16% of all new capacity added during the first six months of 2025. So solar is more nearly 80%, wind is about 16%. In the first half of the year, solar and wind, plus a small amount of biomass, accounted for 91% of new US power capacity. Natural gas was only 8%. Uh, the small, tiny remainder that was left came from oil. Utility scale share of solar installed capacity is now equal to wind, 11.3% versus about 11.5%. So solar and wind utility scale capacity on the US grid right now is about the same, and it's approximately 23%. That doesn't include rooftop solar. If you add rooftop solar, the number is closer to about 28%. Now, the reason for that is that at least 30% of US solar capacity is in the form of small scale systems that are not recorded in the government data. Including that additional solar will bring the share provided by solar plus wind to more than a quarter of America's electricity production. Close to 30%, in fact. If you include hydropower, 7.6%, biomass, 1%, and geothermal, a tiny 0.3%, renewables currently claim a 32.2% share of total US utility scale capacity. Add rooftop solar, and that figure is closer to 36%. Now, you can see, based on the projections from the government themselves, that um, the US is actually on track to hitting approximately 50% renewable capacity across the entire grid by 2030. Could even get there sooner than that, could even happen in 2029. And the reason is because of the 
incredible increase in installations of solar. FERC says that a net high probability additions of solar between July 2025 and June 2028, so over the next three years, will be likely 93,000 megawatts, an amount four times the forecast net high probability additions for wind, the second fastest growing resource. FERC says that net growth for hydropower will be a pretty small 583 megawatts and geothermal 92 megawatts. In other words, solar is doing going to be doing all the heavy lifting over the next three years. Well, not just solar, I should say solar in addition to grid scale batteries and home batteries as well. Now, intriguingly, even though the Trump administration are very anti-wind and solar, uh, <laughs> there is a high probability that renewable energy sources will add 116,000 megawatts over the next three years to the US grid. There is no nuclear capacity forecast over the next three years. Coal and oil will contract, both of them. Adjusting for the different capacity factors of gas and wind and utility scale solar, electricity generated by the projected new solar capacity that will be added to the US grid in the next three years will be more than four times greater than that produced by the new natural gas capacity. Now, amazingly, right now, installed solar capacity is 50% greater than that of nuclear power. Within two years, solar will be in second place for installed generating capacity behind only natural gas. And by 2030, solar will be, will be the number one source of electricity in the United States. Now, the projections of this, by 2028, renewables will account, not including rooftop solar, for 38% of total available installed utility scale generating capacity. If you include rooftop solar, that figure will be closer to 43%. Natural gas will account for 40%. So you can see here how it's very probable by 2030 that the US will actually hit 50% renewables. So what does all of this mean? Well, it means that actually fossil fuels, in spite of the Trump administration's efforts to increase them, which they are to some degree, they're actually just stopping them from going off the grid and retiring permanently. Even in spite of that, the mix of oil renewables accounted for 30% of total generating capacity one year ago. Solar alone was only 9%. Wind was 11.75%. Over 12 months, by the end of June 2025, renewables had risen to 32.2% with solar at 11.3% and wind at 118 So solar and wind are clearly increasing. Massively, though, is solar. Natural gas, it has declined by 1%. Coal has fallen from 15.7% to 14.7%. Oil has fallen as well. Here's what Ken Bossong had to say from Sunday. Notwithstanding the hostility towards solar and wind shown by the Trump administration and its Republican supporters in Congress, both technologies are moving full speed ahead. The New York Times reported that the White House now has Secretary of Health and Human Services, RFK Jr., involved in trying to obliterate offshore wind power. Yeah, I mean, the US government is basically forcing coal power plants to stay open, even though states had planned to close them because they're costing huge amounts of money to run. Incredibly, in spite of everything the Trump administration is doing, it's not really working. Renewables are simply a much cheaper form of energy. And really, the US is made up of a lot of different states, a lot of different cities. The truth is that um, most states are just ignoring the Trump administration and they're going full steam ahead on installing solar and batteries. Now, of course, the Trump administration is definitely slowing things down. It could be a lot better, but it also could be worse. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.